Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some important stuff. First up, top crypto analyst says massive 2.7 billion Bitcoin whale move signals high net worth investors are scooping up Bitcoin. And this is just one of those stories just that allows us to take a step back, when in doubt, zoom out and see exactly what's going on for the big picture of our market. Also, crypto banks are going to swallow fiat banks in three years or even less. This is a fantastic article written by Mark Benz. And the only thing that I can really say about this is, do you really think it's going to take three years? And also in some strange news, a Bitcoin themed art piece sells for $130,000 at Christie's New York. And this really isn't the big story. The big story is that the art piece was supposed to go around 13 or 14,000 and it pretty much is 10 x just like cryptocurrency market. And we're getting all that, but first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is Saturday, beautiful Saturday, October 10th. It's around 4 p.m. Texas time, and oh my, oh my, what the market is doing. I do like these days. So Bitcoin is up 2.7%, almost, yeah, well, a little over 7% for the seven-day period, and we're at 11348 and hopefully uh, we can see a little bit of a pump up to 12,000. But in all honesty, Sundays usually aren't really a good day for cryptocurrency. Usually there's a bit of a dip and then uh, the crypto market starts to rebound on a Monday. So maybe 11.4, maybe 11.5 at the best, but if it hits 12,000, watch out. Ethereum, 374. I mean, this is a massive run actually for uh, Ethereum. It was it a dip below 350. I think it touched around 340, 333 or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely, back up to where uh, I'd like it to be at almost 3%, 8% for the week. So a fantastic week for Ethereum holders. Tether's Tether, nobody cares. XRP, 25 cents, jeez. Bitcoin Cash, 1% up, that's pretty good. Binance Coin, 0 0.3, eh. Chainlink, up 3, 15% for the week, and it's back up to above $10 at 10.67. So another fantastic week for Chainlink because it had actually dropped uh, pretty precipitously. Uh, below that $10 mark, so I'm pretty happy it's hit that. Polkadot is right where it should be, right a little bit above $4. Pretty happy with that. Everything's fantastic. And one of the big stories here, Cardano. Cardano over a week period has increased by 15%, uh, almost 5% in a in a 24-hour time frame. So what's going on? Well, what's happening is that Ethereum 2.0 is going to be delayed for another year, and that is bad news for all the different projects that are that have hopped onto Ethereum. One of those being um, Singularity.net or, sing, or not Singularity. So this is just one of those uh, companies or projects who said, you know what, if it's going to take this long, I mean, we got things to do. Look at what's happening in just the DeFi space, right? In four weeks, it had uh, massively run up, exploded, imploded, and kind of come back a little bit. So do you really think we've got two years to wait on Ethereum? I don't know, but uh, I will tell you who's in the wings waiting to take over. It's Cardano, and they've got some massive plans. Litecoin up 3%. Uh, I really don't care about Litecoin. I'll just be, I'll just be honest with you. I, I I don't care about if Litecoin goes up, great, but it's not a big thing for me. Uh, I'm a cheerleader for everybody, but Litecoin just doesn't really excite me. Crypto.com 1.9. Let's see what else. What is there? Anything fantastic? Woo! Cosmos interoperability um, looks like it's doing pretty good. Seven and a half percent. What else we have? Five percent for IOTA. No idea why. My fave. One of my new faves. Theta Network. And I will always thank Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos for introducing me to Theta. Fantastic stuff. If you don't know, I've already done a couple of live streams over there. And I got to tell, tell you, it is fantastic. It's fun over there. It's really good. There's a lot of engagement. And guess what? There's no scam videos over there. So I really like that. On top of this, uh, VeChain is going to be competing directly with Google. Uh, well, more specifically with YouTube. Even though Google is uh, one of their... Uh, node operators, they are still going to be uh, competing directly with Google because starting next week, they'll be doing video on demand. I think I just got an email from Theta TV where they're going to allow me to do uh, a video on demand. So, I'll, so just like how you, YouTube, you can go to YouTube, you can search one of my videos for a month ago, same thing's going to be for Theta. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I need to actually update my information so you can find me over there because it's pretty fun. Anyhow, VeChain 0.1, uh, Zcash 5.2, Aave 10% for the week. First of all, does anybody know where I can get Aave? <laughs> it's, 
That's what I'm going to ask you right now because I was looking for it. I was actually on Alex Maschioli's show uh, yesterday and we had talked to the founder and uh, fascinating, fascinating guy, super smart, humble, uh, really nice and also doesn't push the envelope doing the safe things to actually push decentralized finance and uh, I have to tell you I think it looks pretty good so Abe is one of those things I can actually keep my eye on I might actually add it to my portfolio who knows maker six and a half percent what geez nine percent for yearn if you ooh. well that's how it goes and what else we got nothing really big before we move on I want to say thanks to the wallet company extra for reaching out and giving me and my subscribers 25 percent off of their flagship product, the Extra Wallet. Uh, it's pretty cool, I got one myself, and you can keep up to seven or eight different uh, cards. You will never lose your wallet, because there's a, there's a chip in there that allows you to find it, which is pretty cool. I've lost my wallet before, and let me tell you, I almost had a heart attack, and it's got pretty great reviews. So if you'd like to up your style game, then Extra, you got a pretty good product. So yeah, that's what it is. And also, if you order the uh, Extra Wallet, looks pretty nice right here, right? Uh, you get 25% off uh, just by using the uh, link below. Now, just so you're aware, this is an affiliate link, so you will get 25% off and I will get compensated for that, uh, but that is the uh, extent of our agreement with Extra. So go ahead and check it out. I've got one, pretty cool, like it so far, and uh, let's move on. All right, so first up, top crypto analyst says, massive 2.7 billion whale move, signals high net worth investors scooping up Bitcoin. And we know this is happening, but it's just good to see the data on it because it no lets us know we're moving in the right direction. So what is going on? So this is Willie Wu. Willie Wu, you haven't heard of him. He's one of those big traders on uh, Twitter, and he's been around for quite some time. He's made a lot of good calls, made some bad calls, as all traders do. But this is what he talks about. He says, look, uh, the Square, Square app, which, you know, Jack Dorsey of Twitter fame, who also owns a couple other billion dollar companies. Well, he owns Twitter and he owns uh, Square, so not doing too bad. But they just purchased almost 5,000 Bitcoin. And then MicroStrategy's 38,000 investment in Bitcoin, he states is just the tip of the iceberg. And look, I've talked about this ad nauseum. These are big companies and they're making big plays. And I think a lot of the different CEOs and different corporations looking at going, hmm, our money's on fire. Uh, we're losing a lot of it because of inflation. Maybe we should get a Bitcoin because it actually holds its value. Just saying, just saying. Anyhow, in the past eight months, Willie Wu says investors have reduced the speculative stockpile of Bitcoin on exchanges by uh, a quarter of a million Bitcoin. That's a lot. Worth about 2.7 billion. So if you have to take a look at what's going on, I always like to take a step back. When in doubt, zoom out. And I know institutional players are coming in because of data like this, data from Santimit, uh, data, data, data. And also, I also like to talk to uh, Alex Mascioli over on his channel. If you don't know, I talk to this guy all the time. But uh, he is the uh, head of institutional investment at Bequant. And I've asked him a couple of times, I'm like, Alex, what are these your your big players uh, actually looking into is it Ethereum? Is it Bitcoin? Is it XRP? Is it Potato Coin? What is it? He said, "Look, man, it's all Bitcoin." He goes, "We do other things, but at a very very small amount. Every single institution, big player, wants to get into Bitcoin because they know where it's going." So, I like his channel because, like I say, it lets us kind of tip behind the uh, curtain to see what the wizards are doing. And um, I like to see what smart money is going on. But so this article really kind of just lays it out as that is exactly what's happening. And when you have big money investments coming in, more cash flow coming in, and all of a sudden they're buying up a ton of Bitcoin and then people are looking for Bitcoin going, hey, uh, where's the supply? Oh, well, it's drying up. What happens when supply dries up? Well, guess what happens to the, the price? I'm just saying that could probably happen. And then Willie Wu pretty much lays it out here. He says, this is one of the few times in my Bitcoin career where the fundamentals or on-chain data and metrics from infrastructure players are in moon mode. Yet, the market is not woke to it. They will be by 2021. Let me say that again. They will be by 2021. This is an opportunity I've not seen since mid-2016. And if you've been on the channel for any length of time, you know that I believe that 2021 is going to be a big year. It's why I'm trying to clean up the space while we do scam of the day, which we need to do more of, actually. While we try to get the, rid of the scams, we try to educate people as much as possible, where I definitely tell you about what's going on in the market, I think 2021 is going to be a massive year for cryptocurrency digital assets. I mean, look, look what happened with Kraken not too long ago. I mean, they had a bank charter, a bank charter, cryptocurrency exchange, unbelievable. And then all these different uh, big players that are coming in. I just, I don't see any way around it. 
Actually, I do take that back. The only way I, I see that that uh, it doesn't have a massive year is if there is total global economic collapse for whatever reason, another uh, ginormous uh, pandemic, some type of world war, or some type of uh, just economic uh, downtrod, downfall that it just wipes away so much GDP out, out of all the countries throughout the entire globe that uh, we just see massive uh just massive problems. That's the only way I see really uh, our industry uh, not making big peaks. But you know, hey, let me know what you think in the comments section. But let's let's keep going. He further on states that the market is not woke because price action is a very laggy indicator of fundamental demand and supply. Mania phases of a bull market is when everyone is woke, but it's too late. Right now, supply is being hoovered up, and he means vacuum. It's, it's being sucked up. And that's the thing. Uh, that's exactly what happened in 2017. The, the time to buy is right now when it is boring, when there's nothing going on, when it's flatlining. And that's what he's talking about in mid-2016. That's where the time was to buy, which is the exact same time right now. Because what's going to happen in six months, eight months, nine months, uh, you're going to see some pretty big rises. And when that happens, that's when everybody comes in, but not you and me. Because we're the smart ones. We're here right now. We are doing our due diligence and making our purchases and dollar cost averaging in so we can set ourselves up for the future. Now, when the other people come in, you can't help everybody, okay? And uh, those are the ones that are going to FOMO in hard and they're going to learn a tough lesson. But that is how things go. It is exactly how I learned. Maybe that's how you learned. Uh, Wu states, unlike, unlike many analysts, uh, Wu feels that recent BitMEX charges are a positive for Bitcoin. So if you're not familiar, uh, BitMEX, the CFTC came in and they said, hey, you don't do enough for money laundering. You don't do enough uh, to protect US citizens because you guys shouldn't actually be in exchange. You shouldn't allow US uh, citizens to actually trade here. I mean, that's beyond the point. The, the, the problem with, with me and BitMEX is that they allowed everybody and their grandmother to trade at 50 to 100x leverage, which means you could put a thousand bucks in and you could leverage yourself up 50, you know, 50,000, 100,000. And you could make a ton of money, but you could lose a ton. And usually what happens with new traders is they lose a ton. And that is not good for the entire market because one person gets screwed out of everything. Not screwed, but they make the wrong decision. And they tell 10 of their friends and those 10 tells 100 and 100 tells 1,000. And you know where I'm going with this. And I just thought it was just bad, just bad. I, I'm not really uh, too enthusiastic about BitMEX. I'm kind of glad they're gone, but they're not the first and they're not the last. However, the, the overarching theme of this article is this. There is big money coming in. And big money, we're talking about like Fidelity Digital Assets, 8 trillion assets under management. They're doing pretty good. Meritrade, 1 trillion assets under management. You got Van Eck. And these guys were big gold bugs. And then in January 2020, they came about and said, hey, you know what? You know what's better than gold? Uh, Bitcoin, way better. Then you got a Paul Tudor Jones, who was like a, a, a legendary trader of the 80s and 90s. And he said, hey, I'm taking 1% to 2%, put it into Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin futures, and uh, that's his next play. So when you see these institutions coming in, you see all the different money sloshing around, you kind of get a feeling of this could be it, and I think it is. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on.